As we get into this last canon of memory, I would like to make a little observation about our rhetorical quest overall. Something that I noticed, and I found it was kind of interesting, so I thought I'd share it here too. And that is that as we've gone through these presentations, and we've talked about all of these various, uh, various and sundry different ways of dealing with stuff, that as we've gone through the canons, the videos have gotten a little bit shorter, and there have been fewer of them per canon. And your know, immediate thought might be, well, that's because Dr. Klein's getting lazy. Okay, there's a possibility that that's the case. Maybe I'm getting lazy, but maybe there's another chance to of something going on, too. Maybe, and this is what I think is happening, as we deal with each of the canons, they're so interconnected that when we talk about things, we find out we've already sort of talked about them. I mean, when we talked about arrangement, right? We had to go back to logic. That was an invention. When we talked about uh, delivery, and we talked about uh, when we talked about invention, we talked about how we need to be emo use our emotions, and we talked about how our delivery is one of the ways we can do that. See, it's all interconnected. So here we are in the canon of memory, and there are really two important things to the canon of memory. You have to remember your speech, and you want your audience to remember your speech. So how can we do that? How can we accomplish it? How can we reach a point where you can remember your speech and your audience can remember your speech? Well, that's what we're going to deal with today. As far as you remembering your speech, we kind of touched on this already. See, there are really four possible methods of remembering your speech. You can give an impromptu speech, you can give a manuscript speech, you can give a memorized speech, or you can give an extemporaneous speech. And uh, those are what I'm going to talk to you about today. These are all part of the canon of memory, and the reason that they're part of the canon of memory are these are different ways of remembering your speech. An impromptu speech is the kind you might have to give if you really don't have much time to figure out what's going on. And there's nothing wrong with giving an impromptu speech if you have to. Your boss says to you, uh, I need you to talk to the rest of the people about uh, our idea for moving the company forward that you, that you told me about the other day. You weren't planning on giving the speech, but you want to keep your job. And so you have to. Okay, that's when you have to give an impromptu speech. An impromptu speech, you don't worry too much about your memory. Uh, your main thing is, in an impromptu speech, is to have what we have call commonplaces. We call these things commonplaces, and commonplaces are little tricks and tools that you have, little quotes you have memorized, little uh, stories that you just keep in the back of your head that you can use over and over and over in lots of different situations, and you just kind of plug them in, and you can get a pretty good speech by just pulling out these commonplaces. But here's the thing. You have to have your commonplaces memorized. So how do you develop them? Well, my rule would be you first of all have to read a lot. Read all the time. Gather lots of different stories. Gather stories and ideas from a wide variety of areas. If you can just suddenly pull out an impromptu speech, well, I recently read, it can impress your audience. Memory is important in an impromptu speech, but you don't remember the speech so much as you remember your commonplaces. Sometimes you have plenty of time to prepare your speech, but you absolutely cannot make a mistake. Situations like this might be if you are giving a speech for a political reason, if you're giving a speech in court, where every word has a particular legal meaning, and you can get in a lot of trouble if you make a mistake. When, you get, when you're in a situation like that, where a mistake cannot be made, and the uh, the style is maybe more important than the delivery. The words you use are more important than the nonverbals. In those cases, I would say that you should probably use a manuscript form 
of memory. In the manuscript form of memory, you don't remember actually anything yourself. Instead, your paper remembers. You read it. You read the notes. You read them word for word. It is not a terrible thing to give a manuscript speech. When we watch the President of the United States give a State of the Union address, all presidents in my recent memory have used a manuscript delivery. The reason for it is they want to make sure every word is right. Because they're setting policy for the country for the next year. And if they make a mistake, oh my goodness, it could mess things up terribly. A misplaced word in a State of the Union could be pretty bad. And we've had some presidents who, when they're giving their other speeches, misplace words sometimes. Not a big deal, unless you're in a legal situation like that. Once in a while, it can be good to memorize a speech. I would argue that there are a few great speeches that we, as Americans, should probably have memorized. We should have memorized uh, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. We should have that. We should have that down. We should know that. Uh, why? Because we can develop commonplaces from it. We should have memorized probably the preamble to our Constitution. We should have memorized uh, some of the most sacred scriptures of each of our religions. Uh, whatever your religion is, you should have a few scriptures memorized from that. We should have some sonnets by Shakespeare memorized. And we should be able to deliver those whenever it's appropriate. But here's the thing with memorized speeches. And this is the reason I don't recommend that you memorize your speeches most of the time. When you have something memorized, okay, let me go through, I will say, the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. I have that memorized. The Congress shall make no law regarding the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the, peaceable, uh, of the people to peaceably assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances. Okay, I've got that memorized. Now, here's the thing. If I start going into that, I kind of have to go through it. And I kind of just have to get through it. And if I mess up, I have trouble going on unless I go back and redo the whole thing. Not that bad when it's something as short as the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. But if it's something that's much more difficult, oh my goodness, you have to go back and redo the whole thing. There are good times to do memorized speaking. And I would recommend that you all do some memorized speaking, just for your own edification. For classroom speaking and for business speaking, however, I strongly recommend you use an extemporaneous method. An extemporaneous method combines all the best parts of all of these. You don't have to have it memorized. You've got notes. And these notes will tell you what, you know, some of your main points are. If you want to use a quote that you want to read, you can read it, or you can memorize it. And that can be really good, too, because then you can continue to maintain eye contact while you give that quote. That's great. You can, you, so you've got some of it that's memorized, some of it that's manuscript. And you know what? The little filler in your speech, the little parts between your main points and the parts you don't have memorized, those are impromptu. And then you get all of the energy of an impromptu speech without having to memorize or write down every word. Oh, this is great. Extemporaneous speaking is, in general, the best form of memory to use in your speeches. But it's not just good enough for you to remember your speech. Your audience has to remember your speech too. So how can we do that? How can we help our audience remember their speech? Remember your speech. When you get up and you give a speech, you want your audience to come away. 
Well, there are lots of methods that have been developed by people throughout time. But most of them are all variations on a form of something we call repetition. Repetition is doing the same thing over and over. Remember when we discussed arrangement and we had the simple speech? You tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. And you know that same kind of thing was kind of hidden in the ancient order too. Uh, if you don't remember what the ancient order is, go ahead and go back and watch that video. Uh, you can learn a little something about arrangement. It's good. But you tell them what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. That is repetition. It's repetition of the whole idea. You can do things over and over. Sometimes we can use repetition of a, uh, of a word order. Uh, there can be examples like the chiasmus. Uh, Ask not what your, you, your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That reversing of the word order can be another tool that you use for memory. See, you're repeating the same words in a different way, and that helps your audience understand. Sometimes we can get down to the level of sound, and repeating sound in a certain way. This has worked pretty well, because I'm sure in the O.J. Simpson trial that the judge gave the jurors some very specific rules as to how you decide the guilt or innocence of the, audi of, of the accused. But I think maybe when they went back there, they didn't remember those specific rules given to them by the judge. They remembered the phrase given to them by the lawyer. And that phrase had a repetition of sound. If the glove does not fit, you must acquit. It worked. The audience remembered. And you can use that tool too. Rhyming is great for helping people remember. Any of these are all repetition. And while there, while there are a few other things that maybe you can do, uh, there's, uh, you can tie an idea to other ideas that have been developed. You can talk about shared experiences that you've had with your audience. Those help too, but the main thing, the main tool that helps an audience remember is if the speaker uses repetition. So for yourself, use an extemporaneous form of form, and that'll help you remember what you're talking about because you've got notes, you've got some things memorized, and yeah, you can fill in the gaps. It'll help you keep things in mind, but for your audience, it would be a good idea to develop some kind of repetition where you say something again. Maybe you could use a repetition of, of ideas, maybe a repetition of words, and maybe a repetition of sound. Any of those might work for you, and I hope that you can find a way to use all of them in your next speech.